heaven and may the Lord bestow upon us his grace and his blessing now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. As we heard the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, uh, which is taken in this month of Bauna, uh, focusing on the grace of the Holy Spirit as we receive and the gifts that we receive of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus <laughs> gives us an example here saying, for those who want to be great, for those who want to be great, this is the rule, and you want to receive the riches in heaven, then this is the great commandment or the golden commandment. How to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, to bless those who curse us, to pray for those who spitefully use us, to turn the other cheek, and to give to those who ask of you without hoping for anything in return. Very easy, very simple. Actually, this is the challenge of what it means to be Christian. How do we love as God wants us to love? Love is the challenge for the Christian that gives us no excuse. We must love in a simple, pure, and unlimited sacrificial way. It is the challenge that we face from day to day. How to love someone who hates us or doesn't treat us as we should speaks evil against us and works behind us doesn't mean just liking them but a self-denial that is uh, truly uh, above and beyond what we see and hear in the world <clears throat> it is although it is not quick and easy it is powerful and it is eternal <clears throat> david the expert in war who was trained since he was a child to fight against the lions and the bears, was called a man of valor, and he was uh, also uh, very great against all the enemies that he faced, not just the lion, but uh, different enemies of the people of Israel, including at some one point even his own uh, people he was fighting against, and even at one point, even in his own son. But how even despite all of this, one of the greatest virtues of David was to be compassionate and gentle, even against his enemies, not when they were in war, but after battle. There's a famous uh, example of this after, um, uh, first during the time when he is against Saul, Saul is fighting against him, and David has the challenge how to fight against the king of Israel who was anointed, and he is trying to kill him. And uh, we know the famous story when he was in the cave and has the opportunity, but he doesn't take the chance to kill Saul. Instead, he cuts off his robe and he tells him that you are the anointed. And Saul relents in that point temporarily from killing David. But after um, uh, Saul is killed, there is a long battle between Saul's family and the family of David that lasted very long time. The commander of Saul's, Saul's army, Joab, uh, was fighting against uh, David and his, until finally he reached a truce. They realized that David's uh, army was getting stronger and stronger, and Abner and his people, the, the followers of Saul, were getting weaker and weaker, so finally they ended in a truce. <clears throat> and David welcomed uh, Abner uh, and began to, uh, they had a meal, they drew the truce, and they left in peace. It was a great success. But the problem came afterwards with David's commander. He wasn't gentle and compassionate like David. He was a good commander. He was brilliant in war, but he lacked the heart that God wanted. And so even after the truce, he told uh, uh, the head of, uh, of um, Saul's commander uh, to that he would like to speak with him, and he uh, struck him uh, in the stomach. This was an example of what it means to be 
uh, a soldier, a good Christian, but without love, can destroy uh, all of the good accomplishments that we have. <clears throat> there are many uh, saints and fathers who wrote about how to love. And although there is not time for us to speak about the greatest of virtues in this time, perhaps we can at least uh, speak in some points of different steps. How do we reach the fullness of love? And where are we in this journey? The first step is not to be the cause, to be the first one to cause harm, as St. John Chrysostom says. A precondition to love is that we ourselves are not uh, initiating, going on the offensive, and doing harm to other people. He said this is a precondition to love. As mentioned in the in the book of Colossians, you yourselves are to put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, a days, there's a strong sense of justice and people want uh, to punish wrong very quickly, publicly, and in extreme measures. Um, why do we want to punish people who treat us poorly? And some people, even if the wrong is small, they will go to extreme lengths to punish other people. They may set conditions and requirements for those people in order to love them and accept them, uh, and sometimes very unrealistic. Yes, we have become oversensitive, and sometimes we need a lot of work to be long-suffering, to be compassionate, and to be forgiving. We can speak evil of other people who have insulted or offended us and not accepting them or forgiving or loving. So we hide ourselves far. This is the first step. The second step is not to take revenge, not to hate or curse or snub people back the way that maybe we felt or we were treated. How to make excuses for other people and to find reasons why people may be behaving in an unacceptable way. And this is maybe more needed, not just for the non-believers, but for the believers as well. The book of Romans chapter 12 uh, has many uh, guidelines. Uh, maybe afterwards in the evening when we sit, you can review uh, what St. Paul is telling, how that we uh, are able to love. It says, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Sometimes we want to be the judge in this strong sense of justice. And we want to avenge in fairness. And we plan out what needs to be done. Uh, instead of seeking what needs, uh, how that we can love someone and forgive and show mercy, we want justice and we demand justice. But this is not the work of the Christian. One time Abuna Tedras Malati was saying, this type of person is telling God, come down from your throne so I can go and judge in the way that I feel is right. And sometimes we feel and do this. Who are we to take justice for ourselves and to uh, determine? Sometimes this type of person obsessed with our own dignity, honor, and rights. And we need to learn how to forget. Yesterday we commemorated St. Moses, the Ethiopian, the one we call him the strong saint. Not only because he was physically strong, but he was strong in virtue and in repentance. And in one famous story, as you know, when all of the brethren were gathering to judge and exclude one of the monks who had sinned against the community. They were looking for Abba Moses because he was the elder and they found him carrying the bag of sand. You know this story, you see it in the icons. And when they asked him, what are you doing? He said, how am I going to go to judge my brother when behind me there is the sand or the many sins which are falling that I am not aware of. <clears throat> One another occasion, there were some brothers who were visiting Abba Antony, and they said to him, give us a word, as most was the common saying. 
So he said, haven't you read the scripture? Isn't it enough for you? They said, no, please tell us we need to hear it from you. So he tells them if someone, he cites the verse that we had read today, someone strikes you on one cheek, give them the other. So they told him we can't do this. So they said, um, if you can't do this, then at least patiently endure the first blow. Like be patient when they strike you on the first. They said, we can't do this either. They said, okay, if you can't do that, then don't fight back. Don't return the blow for the one that you said. They said, we can't do that. So after this, St. Anthony looked at them and said, they are sick. Make them some soup and let them leave. <laughs> Basically, they don't want to be Christian. So I can only tell you what is mentioned in the scripture. And we need to be willing when we have these difficult things happen to us that we need uh, to uh, sacrifice and to obey what the gospel tells us. And there is an internal resistance, natural internal resistance to what the Lord is speaking to us. But because love endures all things and is not provoked, we need to be firm in this. Not just the physical retaliation, but also emotional reta retaliation. There was another occasion when uh, St. Moses, after he became a monk, he was sitting in his cell and some robbers came to take the things that were in the cell. And uh, he knew that they were going to do this also to the, to the monastery. So he wasn't upset or anything. He was still very strong. So he bound them up and he took them to the other monks. And he said, do to them what you feel is true. And among them were some of the thieves that were robbing with him when he was. So they looked and they asked him, you are the one? He said, yes. Said, what are you doing now? He said, I, my way is with Christ. You, and they said, you could have killed us. They know he could kill someone with his hands very easily. This was what he did every day. But they realized that he found, and he told them, I found someone greater, stronger, and much more powerful than anything that I knew. Then he began to speak to them about the love of the Lord. And so they said, we want the same. And many of those robbers, as you know, that were fighting with him, said, we want to be monks and we want to worship God in the same way that you worship. Love was able to convert. The power that he had in the past was only able to do harm. The third step is not to resist. What does it mean to turn the other cheek? To turn the other cheek means not only I accepted wrong, which in, in this case, there was no um, I didn't instigate, I didn't initiate, I didn't, um, bless, I didn't um, cause someone, say something to, to be slapped. There was no reason. And I, I received wrong innocently. To turn the other cheek means I'm not only able to accept the first blow, but I'm willing to have more. That's why when some of the saints, like St. John the Short, had turned the other cheek in someone who had slapped him, he cast out the demon just by turning the other cheek, without any prayer, by obedience to the gospel. And this is not only thinking no evil, having no bitterness and no uh, repulsion from the person, but a pure heart that is able to follow the gospel. How many of us have reached this level? You say, well, I'm almost there, or I have been. Or you say, people hurt me many times, and I was able over the years to, to ignore. But how can you go back to the same person? This is the challenge, not just accepting. But how can I go continually without remembering or holding the first blow against the other person? Or in the quiet, telling my friend, my husband, well, can you imagine what they said, what they did, what and it hurt, and it's all red. <laughs> we can go to details. But this is not what turning the other cheek means. It is a silent accepting of suffering that is without excuse and without reason. That's the cross. That's why when they struck the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, he turned the other cheek, and they struck him and spit on him, you know, it was serious, but it says, as the lamb before its shears was silent. 
the Lord Jesus Christ was against the scribes and Pharisees for many years, speaking and telling them what they are doing wrong. But in the time of the cross, he was silent. There is nothing to say. In, yes, in the time when he was before uh, the Sanhedrin and they were trying to accuse him, he asked, he said, why do you strike me? Because I said the truth. He wants to make sure that what I am saying, Lord Jesus Christ, what he is saying is true. And it is the word of God. And no one should be punished for saying the word of God. So he wanted to make sure before the council that sometimes we use it as justification that, yes, I, I can speak back when I'm hurt. But truly, if to turn the other cheek, there's no speaking back. You can't speak to someone while you're turning the other cheek. It is done in an acceptance, not in vindication. Sometimes we feel we need to avoid difficult people. And it's true. If our love is not at the place where it needs to be, maybe I do need some rest. I need to evaluate. I need to go to confession. I need to examine why maybe I have pride and ego. Maybe I'm not ready to confront and to accept, and I won't be able to turn the other cheek. Maybe I may even say or do something inappropriate. So in that case, we need some time. Until we can follow fully the commandment that I can turn the other cheek. I hope, we pray, that all of us can obey the gospel, this gospel. Because if we're able to do this, we're able to fulfill all the commandments. The fasting, the vigil, the prayer, the repentance, this will come very easy for us. But it's difficult and it is hard, especially when we are dealing with a lot of people like us who are know the gospel and love, but still sometimes we are not perfect Every one of us are still not yet perfected. So there is some room and some need for us to go the second one. But turning the other cheek is not only what God requires. This gospel is not just about turning the other cheek. It's one line. The rest of it asks us to do good. Not just to don't do evil. Not just to accept more evil. <laughs> coming to us, but how to do good to someone who is doing evil to you. This is what St. Bohemius learned from uh, those who he the Christians he was going to martyr. And they said, let us wash your feet. Let us feed your soldiers. Let us take care of your uh, horses. They said, okay, you can do all those things, but we are still going to kill you. They said, yes, we accepted that, but let us do a good work before we die. He said, we don't understand what you're talking about. This is what the Lord commanded us to. If we are going to die today, the Lord taught us to love. Let our last act be of love because that we are going to die, we're going to die. But we want to die as good Christians. St. Bophomia saw this. He put down his sword. He said, I need the power and the love that these people have. Who told you this? He said, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, he is my commander and I will follow after him. Not fighting back and not avoiding the person is not enough. But how to go the second mile, <clears throat> this is the work for us. This is the true Christian. This is the one who loves in reconciliation, who loves in silence. And as Romans 12 tells us, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Someone says, I want to put fire on the head. Okay, I'll do some good things. But in the process of doing good things, we fulfill the love. Then it changes our heart. And we said, why would we want wrong to be committed to the other people? Why would we want them to hurt like we are hurting? I will not feel justified. Maybe a little while I'll feel the sense of vengeance, sense of justice. But after a while, it turns against us. We don't have peace, and we don't fulfill the commandment of love. So there was something always be lacking. And if I keep seeking this justice after a while, my life will be filled with more and more bitterness, instead of more and more compassion and love for others. Love to be perfect, <clears throat> as St. Paul says, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ has forgave you, so also you must do. But above all these things, put on love, 
which is the bond of perfection. Love treats enemies as they are friends and transforms enemies into friends. That's why St. John Chrysostom says, there is a way of being rid of your enemy, and that is to turn him into a friend. That is what the power of love was able to do. The blessed man and woman is able to love all people equally, and they will receive a great reward in the kingdom of heaven as the Lord promised. You want to be great in the kingdom? Fulfill this. The people that you don't want to think about, don't want to talk to, don't want to interact with, maybe you praying for fire to come down. Those are the people that we need to focus in the rest of this fast on how to love and serve them. Even if in the beginning, the only service you offer is prayer for them, that God will change their heart, God will uh, bless their family, God will transform them and give them what you have, the love and the saints and the family of the church that we have. St. Isaac the Syrian says, consider all men, whether they are believers or, or murderers, unbelievers or murderers, as equal in good and honor, that each one by his nature is your brother, even if without knowing it he has wandered from the truth. Let us love all, turn the other cheek, and fulfill the commandment of our Lord. Lord be to none and unto each one of us.